I do want to emphasize the importance of, for you to be active on simsan.ca. You do it while you're serving. I'm talking the serving population. We offer you this unique, uh, your own email address that Google is providing some excellent tools for us. Uh, your email address can easily be set up by a major S or, or, or others. You're, it's basically your current DWAN email address, but you replace the, the suffix forces.gc.ca with simsen.ca. Mine, uh, you can have an appointment by appointment or by name. If you have any questions on what's covered today, please access me on, uh, on Simsen. My email address is colonelcommandant at simsen.ca, for example. By the time you retire, we hope we will have in place information that wherever you choose your, your, uh, your last place of residence, that we will advise you of other uh, members of our branch who are retired in that area. We'll advise you of potentially some employment opportunities. We'll advise you of people who can talk to you about setting up your own business, if that's the route you wish to choose but advise you of how you can continue to be part of this family and work on things that interest you, whether it's some professional paper discussion, whether it's heritage projects, or whether it's looking after your fellow members of the CNE family and being prepared to assist them or their families if they are, have, are in distress for whatever reason. That's where we're going. I'm prepared to take any questions. But I should provide the comment on the school. Yeah, Nick, would you like to say a few words uh, the, the coming of the school is actually playing a key role in getting uh, 50, at least 50 members of our branch to Vimy Ridge to be part of Canada's 150th uh, uh, birthday celebration. It's going to be, that's, it's going to be, you may not know much about it now, but just as you've seen our celebrations and commemoration of the War of 1812, 1814, and other, and the end of the Second World War, we're going to now see over the next years a building of momentum. It's already a website the government's established on how we are going to celebrate the 150th anniversary of Confederation and the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Bimmy Ridge. So, as the general said, I think uh, we all know that you know the artillery, the infantry, and a lot of other branches are very, very good at sending people overseas and conduct battlefield tour study. They have done this for many years. For some reason, our core and our branch, not as good about it, probably because we're so geographically dispersed. Uh, if there's two important battles, probably in, in World War I, that we will celebrate the 100th anniversary next year, uh, mainly Vimy and Battle of Hill 70. Vimy on the land side, uh, first time that four Canadian divisions worked together as a core, so it's probably a battle we can relate to as we played uh, signals, played a an important part in, in it. Hill 70 in August 1917, first recorded use of air to ground communication, so very much linked to the, to the RCAF aspect of our branch. We are working with uh, the artillery branch. The artillery branch has already organized buses and they're starting to reserve hotels for that, for that tour in, uh, in 2017. And they have offered uh, 50 places on that trip. Ideally, we would make this much bigger. Let's start with 50. Uh, we envision this as a trip where retired and retired reserve and regular force members could participate in. I feel that on the retired and reserve side, uh, it might be more easy to participate in terms of, uh, of, of probably money. Uh, we all know that our reserve units have some very uh, wealthy sponsors, usually. On the rec force side, it might be more challenging, but that's my, uh, that's my, uh, uh, that's one of the challenges I'll, like, I'll accept, is try to, to, to give a bit of traction on the uh, rec force aspects. I envision on, on that trip, you know, on the rec force aspect, basically deserving members as uh, low of a rank as possible. So you know, we want corporals, we want lieutenants on that trip. We just don't want uh, people like me or our generals on that trip. It's, it would be really for <laughs> <laughs> maybe one, sir, or two. But you, you, you get you get you get the you get the point. Is the trip should be uh, really for our young our young members, our young and, and deserving members. So more, more to there's a hand in the back. Um, this is after the last week. I can't recall when is it possible to be 
made if you intend on going? Was it this Christmas or next Christmas? Because if it's this Christmas for the $500 deposit, it's a little tight. So can you remember, maybe General Richard, can you remember what was said? In order to reserve this space, as you can imagine, this is going to be a major pilgrimage of Canadians and anyone associated with the military. So we're in early. We have the bookings with the travel agency, but they will be asking for a deposit to hold those spaces, both for what I anticipate will be at least 50 retired members who will pay their own way and 50 serving members distributed as the branch leadership decides X number of positions from, for each unit being offered space on, on this pilgrimage. Uh, the deposit, uh, it's not clear yet exactly how we're going to arrange the deposit. The branch leadership has, has discussed uh, whether we provide money up front. We have the full support of the branch leader and members of the branch advisory council in moving forward to make this happen. So for the retired members, we expect we would require a deposit. They will be paying their own way. We would expect they would require a deposit early in the new year. And there will be a letter going out both uh, from the branch leadership, the colonel, uh, the, the commandant of the school, and I will be sending a letter out to the retired population getting an indication of expressing of interest so we can reserve an adequate number of spaces on this, uh, this tour. It may very well be that we'll organize our own tour uh, separate from the artillery because of the large number of people uh, who would express interest. Jan, does that address your question? Any other questions on anything we've covered this, anything, any other questions on anything we've covered uh, this morning, reference the association and specifically even the, the BIMI trip as well. Uh, Chief Warren Officer Dubois. The uh, battlefield trips, can be restricted to only military members, like, or spouse and family member would be allowed? My wife and I are both going. We've made a booking already, as, as have other retired members. It, it, it would not be limited. In, in, that, in that sense, uh, certainly for not for the retired members, and if the branch on, serving members uh, have only X number of seats and the focus on, uh, on junior NCMs and junior officers, then uh, I think it's just a question of making the booking and, and adding to the group, adding another bus. So it's, it's, the question is express, getting that expression of interest. Even those present today, uh, NCMs, officers, is this something that interests you to be part of this pilgrimage? In final respect to those people who have taken the time this past CNE week, I really want to extend as the branch edge uh, my humble, humble thanks. Awesome job all week by all participants and organizers alike. And I'm, I'm so terribly grateful for folks staying on time and, and following through with absolutely everything they've done this week. As secondary duties, these units are tapped. A lot of them are running pretty close to empty and people are stressing it. So special thanks to those spouses that are tolerating things out there as well and dealing with this because we're all Canadians, not Cantonadians. I appreciate everything. Thank you. Bonjour encore. Hello again, everyone. Um, so for my part, uh, pour moi, c'était un matin tellement intéressant uh, et uh, je me trouve uh, re renouvelé et prêt à atteindre beaucoup. There's a lot ahead of us. Uh, I really appreciate and thanks to all those who gave us updates this morning. Hopefully all of you uh, took, uh, took some note of where we are and where we're going in a number of different areas, what the branch looks like, what our challenges are. Uh, for those that are online, uh, hopefully this has been useful as well and we look forward to your feedback on how uh, our approach to technology has worked. What is the branch and why is it important? It's a test question. Does everyone know the answer to that now? People. Yeah, so it's about people. The branch is you. And to uh, paraphrase uh, a dead Kennedy out there somewhere, ask not what the branch is going to do for you, but ask what you can do for the branch. Because it, it is about people. It's about looking after uh, our people. It's about connecting our people. It's about a human network that has to be fully leveraged for us to do better in operations and for all of the reasons uh, that have just been laid out for you so eloquently by uh, some of our retired folks that are doing so much work on our behalf uh, to look after our heritage, to look after some of our people in distress, and to really celebrate what we have done, what we are doing, and what we're going to do in the future. So is the branch important? Well, you're, you're goddamn right it is.
The future of the Canadian Armed Forces is in this room. The future of operations is in this room. To fight and win in the modern battle space, it will not happen unless it's network enabled. It will not happen unless you've got a system of systems that is not only tuned to deliver effects, but it's secure and it's well defended. To fight and win in the modern battle space, we have to draw from brand new domains like space and cyber. And we're just figuring out what they are, but I can tell you all the skills and capabilities that this group carries in their back pocket are going to be part of that answer. And there's no one else that's going to figure it out other than the folks that are inside this room. You are the future, and it's not just important for the branch. This branch is important for operational success. So I, uh, I encourage you. I encourage you to make every use of the branch for what it is. I encourage you to keep participating in events. I encourage you to sign up on SimSet. I encourage you to support your foundation for all of the flow through benefits that come not just to the museum, but to members in need and to bursaries and all the rest of that because it's a small amount of money and it's for a great cause. So I, I need you to do that. I need you to respond to the calls for volunteers because our retired community has done uh, a phenomenal job of heavy lifting, especially in the last few years where we've had a lot of, uh, a lot of different activities from our, our branch history project to events to uh, the, re the rejuvenation of uh, our association. A phenomenal effort and, and you know, I applaud them and I thank them for that heavy lifting, but it's, it is a shared effort. It has to be a shared effort going forward. Uh, and I can tell you that I'm, uh, I, like you, am, am, am busy and with three and five jobs and lots of stuff going on. And it's easy to say, yeah, I just can't get there from here. Um, but it's too important to, to let it drop and we can't just leave it all on the shoulders of our, our retired community. So I encourage you uh, to put your shoulder to the wheel as well. Uh, I encourage you as well. Um, the other aspect of the branch is this is the opportunity where we can get together and think above and beyond our tactical roots. So by all means, have a strong core and do great things tactically in a land environment. By all means, have a strong uh, telecommunications uh, support and operations uh, inside the Air Force. Uh, but we do have to reach out to the other environment and environments, the Navy, uh, space environment is the domain is here. We should own that as well uh, because we're doing all the smarts behind it. Uh, and of course, cyber to come. We have to connect these things above, uh, above and beyond. It's always been that way for the members of this branch. For us to succeed, we're about connecting things up, enabling command. So for us to work as, at a squadron level, we have to understand the brigade to connect it up. To work at the brigade level, you have to understand the division and so on. Same thing on the Air Force side. So within this branch, I ask you to think beyond the narrow scope and you've heard it a couple of times in a couple of different, uh, a couple of different presentations, is to understand the greater vision, the greater intent, and the fact that we have, it's our job to connect all of that up together. And uh, you know, I'll freely admit that there's some heavy lifting to do in the center to come up with a, a, a more articulate vision, to come up with a better architectural approach, so that we start with a system of systems and plug things in better, as opposed to start with a whole bunch of tactical effects and then try and knit, knit them together after the fact. It's a tall order, and not any one single part of our branch and community can get it done alone, so we have to think bigger and broader, think to our flanks, think to our higher, and of course it's our business to connect uh, to our allies as well when we get into the coalition situations. Just a, a phenomenal set of challenges for all of us. Uh, I, for one, am happy to be part of this group of professionals because we've got the opportunity to do so much good and to be the telling factor uh, in operational success going forward. Uh, my final words uh, are a bit of an echo of our, our ads here. Ron, uh, thanks to you for setting this up today. Uh, thanks to the branch office for their efforts in organization and coordination, uh, as well to the, uh, the Kingston-based units, uh, uh, to the CO's uh, leadership there and to all members. I know it is uh, extra work and uh, but it's for a good cause so thanks very much for hosting 
uh, once again and uh, doing so much extra from uh, 21EW, uh, from our school and uh, from the Joint Signal Regiment. Uh, I encourage you, uh, I imagine I'll see at least a few of you at our museum opening and uh, I may not be able to make it myself la uh, later on today for uh, the ceremony at, uh, at Cataraque. But uh, thanks very much for your time and atten attendance and attention and uh, I look forward to uh, make, uh, making a whole lot of progress in all of these areas that have been laid out today over the coming years. Thanks very much.